Hello everyone, Hyper here, and welcome to episode 2 of Learning a New Class. In the previous episode, I went over the very basics that I go through when learning a new class, such as looking at kind of what legendaries, what builds, what stats I need, and kind of start making a plan of how I want to gear up this character, and what I should be doing over the next week or so. So now it's been exactly one week since I leveled this character to 60, and I just wanted to give you a quick recap of what I've done on it. So week one started off with getting the 180 eye level that you need to do LFR uh, through the Covenant campaign and a couple of rogue dungeons. I think I did about two or three. Um, then once I was able to do LFR, I did all the bosses on LFR. And I finished the whole Covenant campaign, got to Renown 40 throughout the week. Uh, besides that, I did a ton of Mythic Plus. As you can see, I completed a bunch of runs. Um, and on top of that, I was able to get into a normal run, which gave me a couple of items. And last night I got into a guild mythic run. So they funneled me a bunch of gear. Um, prior to yesterday, this character was about 205 eye level, but with the mythic funnel and now the weekly reset, we are now sitting at 218 eye level. Um, I also saved all my valor um for after the reset and then any items that i didn't get out of mythic or out of my weekly box i was able to upgrade with valor so this character is sitting in a pretty good spot and at this point it's time to start min maxing what i'm going to do on it and this process kind of happens throughout the week um as you can see i've changed a few things i've changed my ui um made a bunch of weak auras for this character because you know just the bare bones weak auras were not doing it and also made a bunch of macros that i am using um basically any utility spell that can be cast on others um i made into a mouse over or focus macro any utility spells that can be cast on party members or friendly targets i made a mouse over for just to have everything in easy access so for UIs, for weak words in specific, and macros, um, you should be looking at either class guides. They typically have a macro section that gives you the useful ones, but generic macros you can also find in a bunch of videos. If you're not sure how to make them, there's tons of guides on how to make macros, depending on what type of macros you enjoy using. Um, for weak words, however, you can either make your own, get a bunch of streamers usually have their UIs up for, you know, like subs, for example. Um, or if you go to Wago, they have tons of free UIs. Just make sure that whatever UI um, you pick, whatever week or as you pick, kind of makes sense to you. Um, there's a bunch of different styles you can do with week or as, so make sure you pick something that you enjoy looking at and that gives you the best information you can get out of it. Um, so my weak auras follow a very simple logic. If the spell is available, it's just the icon. If I can't use it because I don't have resources, then it's grayed out. Um, if it's not in range, then they turn red. Um, and if something's on cooldown, then there's just a countdown over it. Other weak auras might add fancy stuff such as glows. Um, you know, when something's active, it will glow. For me, I prefer just separate icons. So just make sure that whatever weak aura you end up picking, it makes sense to you because ultimately that's what's most important. So the next thing that I kind of want to go over is where do we go from here? So the first week I've played this character a ton um, and the adjustments I had to make were mostly to my keybinds. Whenever you're starting a new class, we can go up to the target dummy here, you are going to level that character and just put spells on your bars as you get them right but then once you get to cap and you start playing the character you realize that some of the keybinds are probably not in a good spot because your build changed you know you have more spells um so making sure that everything is laid out in a way that makes sense to you is extremely important so I had to shift around a bunch of my cooldowns because like I said, while you're leveling, Paladin has one major cooldown and that's Wings. Then once you hit max level and you pick all the talents, you end up having one, two, three, four, five, six cooldowns. So making sure that those are on keybinds that make sense um, is very important instead of just putting them on whatever keybind you had left over at the time. 
Next is how do you play the character? Um, you need to start learning the rotation, how to use cooldowns properly, and starting to get into the min-max stuff of your class. So what enchants do you need? Stuff like that. So for this, again, you can either go to guides or you can go to Warcraft logs. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the Wowhead guide for Red Paladins and in the rotation section, you can actually select which talents you use. Um, so I've selected the pretty much single target build that everyone uses on Red Paladin uh, just to get an idea of how do I use my cooldowns. So this list will be a general spell priority of all the buttons that you have. Um, so Seraphim, Avenging Wrath, Final Reckoning, Execution Sentence. Those are the four cooldowns that I want to use when they're up. So I always want to use them together if they're up. Um, and after that, I can see that Templar's Verdict is obviously my highest single target spender ability. And then Divine Toll, Wake of Ashes, Hammer of Wrath are like in, a, in a descending order of how important they are to press if they're available. So this will happen during your cooldowns. This list I mainly look at for just the general rotational stuff. For example, if I have both Blade of Justice and Judgment available, which one do I press? According to this list, I press Blade of Judgment. If I have Hammer of Wrath or Crusader Strike at two charges, which one do I press? Well, I press Hammer of Wrath. So this is kind of what I look at this list for. And it's super useful because outside of your cooldowns and outside of your opener, um, that's where you spend you know, 80, 90% of your time. So knowing which button is the most important to press in a specific moment is extremely valuable. And this list is less useful for just you know, giving you a full breakdown. It's more useful in kind of figuring out what you should be pressing outside of your cooldowns. Um, so, me personally, I'm just looking at this list from like number eight downwards um, in terms of what should I be pressing if everything is available to me. So then if you scroll further down, you get the opener. The opener is extremely important because um, it's your cooldown phase, it's your burst phase. For several classes, this is where you will be doing most of your damage. And like in the opener, um, once your two minute cooldowns, three minute cooldowns, whatever, come back up, you essentially are simulating the opener again. So knowing how to play during your cooldowns can make an absolutely huge, massive uh, difference to your DPS. So people who don't optimize their cooldowns, they don't know how to use their cooldowns, they just press them and then keep playing the game like nothing's changed, uh, typically end up doing a lot lower DPS than players who know how to optimize the cooldowns that they have to pack as much damage in there as possible. So I am playing Kyrian with Execution Sentence on single target. So this is where I want to see how do I do the opener. Um, this is telling me to Blade of Justice, Judgment, Crusader Strike, Seraphim. So this is my first cooldown that I pop. So these are all builders. Essentially, it's telling me build up two, three, four Holy Power, then press Seraphim, then press Crusader Strike or a Blade of Justice if it procced off cooldown then use my wings. So this means I will be sitting at two holy power when I press wings. Um, then it wants me to hammer of wrath because during wings I can use hammer of wrath. So that's going to put me at three holy power. Then it wants me to final reckoning, which essentially starts my burst phase on the target. Then execution sentence, which uses three holy power. So now I'm at zero. Um, then I divine toll, which with the conduit, it should proc to um, give me three or four holy power. After that, I Templar's Verdict, Wake of Ashes, Templar's Verdict. Um, so I've already played Red Paladin for you know, this whole week, so I know that they're missing something on this list, um, but I'll go over that in the logs. So this is the default opener that I should be looking at practicing. So just to make sure that they have the correct info here, I'm going to go over to Warcraft logs and see if people are kind of following the same um, reasoning in their opener and their cooldown usage as is listed over here. So over on Warcraft logs, I'm looking at a Hunger and Destroyer log because this is pure single target and that's all I'm interested in for now. Um, 
And if you go to casts and timeline, it gives you a very easy to digest, you know, timeline of how are they pressing abilities? When are they pressing abilities? So in the wowhead guide, it said that I should judgment, um, blade of justice, then crusader strike, and then press seraphim. This person's pressing an extra crusader strike, which makes sense. Um, because you know, seraphim only lasts about 15 seconds. So you can probably do this either way. It probably doesn't make that much of a difference. Then they wings. Um, Hammer of Wrath use their final reckoning along with their unused trinket. Execution sentence, divine toll, final verdict, wake of ashes, final verdict. So pretty much everything lined up perfectly except for the one crusader strike, which um, is understandable. It, either way you press it, it probably doesn't make that much difference to your DPS. But from there on, what is important, and this is where kind of understanding what your abilities do becomes important, is that they judgment, blade of justice, and use another final verdict. So this is kind of the important part to me that I am getting out of this log. So whenever you press execution sentence and final reckoning, from there on you have 8 seconds to do as much damage as you can, because essentially all your damage is amped. So what you want to do is getting three spenders inside that eight second window. So pressing any abilities that puts you at enough holy power to be able to get three spenders inside the window is extremely important um, for Red Paladin specifically. For other classes, it might be other min-max things um, like, you know, on Frost DK, using your pillar window correctly and making sure that you get the chains of ice towards the end of it um it's different for every single class but understanding those little nuances will make a overall a pretty big difference in how much damage you do so out of this basically i got how i should be using the opener aka how i should be using my cooldowns whenever they're up um and how i should be pressing what i should be pressing when i don't have cooldowns so the default breakdown that list that we were looking at on wowhead was extremely important for how i play this class outside of my cooldowns another thing that i'm always going to check on logs is general cooldown usage what cooldowns get synced together and what cooldowns can be used by themselves if you look at an unholy dk log for example you will often see apocalypse being used by itself with no other cooldown synced to it um, if you're not using the the conduit but on a red paladin however as you can see they use seraphim final reckoning execution sentence divine toll and wake of ashes all in the same cooldown window now if i scroll over one more it should be the same thing but this time with wings so they just repeated the same process then if we keep scrolling it should be again just a cooldown with no wings so what I'm getting is that I can press Seraphim about 5 seconds before my final reckoning is off cooldown, um, which gives me time to build up some more holy power before final reckoning is off cooldown. Uh, but essentially I do need to sync these cooldowns together. I can't just press them as they appear or as they come off cooldown. Because obviously one's a 1 minute cooldown, one's a 45 second. So I in theory, if you kept pressing them as soon as they were available, you would desync everything and everything would be broken. So understanding what needs to get used together and what can be used by itself is extremely important to playing your spec. So that is the process I go through to learn the rotation and cooldown usage for any class that I play. And then from the point where you understand in theory how you should be playing it, it's time to put it in practice. Uh, make sure whenever you're doing dungeons, you are focusing on doing your opener, your cooldowns correctly, your rotation correctly. You will mess up from time to time, but it's important to acknowledge that you messed up and then, you know, fix that mistake or next time focus on not making the mistake. And eventually it will all become muscle memory. And once you have it down to muscle memory, you're far less likely to mess up things than if you had to think about every single ability that you're pressing. So this process I also go through for AoE damage as well. So for Mythic Plus, uh, you're often not doing a single target opener and you will be using different talents. So for this, you can look at a boss fight like Sun King 
the first you know 10 20 seconds of the fight um or once phase two starts and you get all those ads you can also look at that or you can just watch people stream mythic plus to get an idea of how to do the aoe cooldowns rather than the single target cooldowns but in my book it's more important to learn the single target first and then the aoe you will probably pick up a lot quicker so this was episode two let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions anything specific that you want me to cover in episode three um, once we move into episode three it's going to be a lot more min max stuff we'll start simming the character um, looking at enchant stats and all that good stuff um, for this episode i mainly wanted to focus on playing the character and how you play the character Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.